We lived each day for itself back. We took what we could from everything we needed. It was hard work. It took the best we had to get. Pioneer life was not to last. Pressures for change were building. Americans wanted more from life than a cabin in the wilderness. A familiar symbol of change was the general store. Well, here we are, Bess. Better get to it. Come with me? No, I'm staying right here. You go on and do your shopping, or whatever you call it. Please, Asa. You can help me choose. I don't want to make a mistake. Well, this whole idea is a mistake. Yeah, I feel about coming in here, buying things we can make ourselves, and make them better. That's not true. There's some things we can't make. I'm tired of doing without. I'm here to buy something special, and that's that. Morning. Beautiful morning, man. Can I help you? I need some... I, I... Bingham, we have a fine selection here. Walking Dad? I made this broom really knows how to make brooms. Better than you? Oh, I don't know. I make good brooms. But you that, that shawl you have on, did you... Is this? Yeah. Yes, I do a lot of this sort of thing. It's very simple. Ever think of making them to sell? No. I just make what we need. You know how it is on... And I'll sell them for you. For good money. Right here in the store. Did you hear that, Asa? I did. Sir, I see you know a fine broom when you see one. I tell you what. You leave me that shawl, and I'll give you a couple of brooms. And the gingham. Thank you. All this for my old shawl. I'm going to go right home and make you a hundred shawls. <laughs> well, right. We didn't make a hundred, but we made a lot. And they did fetch a good price. So we stopped making everything at home. We bought what other people made. Cobblers, weavers, tailors, carpenters. Even Asa gave in. He became a harness maker. Best in the county. As Americans began to specialize, they produced more than ever. The nation became prosperous, populous, and restless. By 1800, another age of change was in the making. The age of machines, that's what they'll call it in the history books. Machines are going to make things better and faster. You mark what I say. Machines are going to change the world. Now, you're a lucky young fellow to be getting in on it right at the start. Yes, sir, no. Could I ask you a question? I'll save your questions. Don't waste another minute. Come on over here, I'll show you what to do. Nothing like the farm, is it? No, sir. <laughs> this is our machine shop. We turn out all our textile machines here. Finest spinning frames in the state. Each one does as much work as 2,500 women working at home. 2,500? Oh, come on, Mr. Morton. You think I'm kidding? How'd you like to try to guess how much yarn our frames can spin? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh... I'll tell you. The answer is 29 miles of yarn an hour, 12 hours a day. That's 348 miles a day. Twelve hours a day, huh? All year long? That's right. Seven days a week, right in this shop. Work eight if I could. Ah, uh, we... We always took Sunday off on the, on the farm. It's out of the question, son. You'd lose your momentum. By golly, I wish I was you. Bright young man with his future ahead of him. You work hard, grasp every opportunity, and you'll be a rich man by the time you're 30.
Probably nothing could have stopped the momentum of America's productivity. Machines turned out thousands of products never seen before. Products that did things no one had ever dreamed possible. the age of machines was creating a time of plenty. Sometimes it took a little getting used to. Janet, this is absurd. I've never seen you carry on so. That's what you call it, carrying on. I work myself into a tizzy trying to save us money. I have eyes. I see what you do around here. This is going to be more fun than we've ever had before in our lives. Now stop all this and come outside and take a look. It is a disgraceful expense. One look. If you don't think it's beautiful, I'll... You'll take it back. We'll talk about it. One look, then. certainly is different, isn't it? I knew you'd like it. I knew it. How did they ever make such a thing? Well, Mr. Henry Ford calls it mass production. That was 1915. Mr. Ford's assembly line was to transform America. It helped the nation forge a whole new technology. And technology inspired a whole new way of life. We became the most broadly productive and creative people on Earth. In 1945, American can-do made victory possible. A new era of startling changes began. One of the most significant changes came in the early 50s. Who was that, Bill? Name's Ed McKelvey. What kind of business machines? Computers. I think we ought to get one. They're kind of like a tabulator, only they're much faster and they do more. Oh, well, come off it, Bill. It took us months to set up the system we've got. And don't I know it, and we still can't catch up. I think one of these new computers would really do a good job for us. Do a job for us, like magic. Well, that's something that really gets me mad. I've been in business for 20 years, and the only kind of magic I've ever known is hard work and lots of it. If we're going to catch up here, that's what's going to do it. A computer isn't magic. It's a tool to help us work better. And you talk about catching up. How are we going to grow, uh, handle more business? Uh, hello, uh, Jerry. Uh, yeah, no, I was going to call you. Uh, no, I don't have the information for you. Uh, the best I can do is Tuesday. We're, we're jammed up here, uh, Jerry. Yeah, well, I'm really sorry, Jerry. Yeah, well, OK. A T.A.L. job? Yeah. He's pretty upset. Okay, you win. We'll give it three months. I must be going soft. Well, as it turned out, that was one of the smartest things we ever did. Smartest thing thousands of businessmen ever did. What we had found in the computer was a productivity machine. Through the 60s, it was to let our nation grow as we had never grown before. And it did it in a time-honored American way, getting the job done faster, cheaper, better. Today, 
our heritage of change continues. The computer has kept up with it and is helping it happen, giving us one of the key tools we need to stay productive. now is to become more productive than ever. It won't be easy, but it's a job that must be done. Sounds good. Then I close the presentation with our main point. About the inventory. Right. If we implement these new procedures, we can reduce our inventory significantly. And eventually, we can reduce our costs. It's a fine program. Everything's right there. I'm sure they'll go for it. Got any doubts? Oh, not about the program. I believe in it. But? That's the answer. What's the other half? We are. The kind of people we are. Are we willing to dig in and make it work? Grandfather. He said it saved the old man's life many times. I can believe it. They had what it takes in those days. Real spirit. Not like he. No, I don't agree with that. We have it still. Plenty of it. We just need a little reminder every now and then. Like this. Thank <laughs> you. 